Now, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, says the routine overseas medical checkup embarked by President Mohamed Buhari is a direct indictment of his presidency over its failure to fix the healthcare system, which has been wrecked by his administration. Meanwhile, the presidency says President Mohamed Buhari has only traveled to the United Kingdom for a routine medical checkup. Discussing with me is PDP member Oladi Meji Fabiyi and Nelson Ekujumi, a uh, public affairs um, analyst. Many thanks for joining me, uh, gentlemen, uh, on this particular discourse. Okay, let me start with you now, Nelson. Uh, a lot of people are saying, uh, different schools of thought are saying that uh, it does not really make any sense that the president is traveling to the United Kingdom for a routine. Uh, the, the, the main phrase here is routine, a routine medical checkup, uh, when the National Association of Resting Doctors are planning on a strike tomorrow. How do you react? Well, thank you very much. I think um, it's unfortunate that the National Association of Resident Doctors are planning a strike tomorrow. But you and I know for free that the strike by the National Association of Resident Doctors does not have any relationship with the medical uh, checkup by Mr. This is a trip that Mr. President has undertaken in the past. And we all know that if you are medical, it builds on you to listen to medical advice and you and do the needful. Because life has not duplicated. We are talking about a life condition here. Uh, we don't know the medical history of Mr. President. That is between him and his medical uh, experts. And uh, trying to mix up the strike by a National Association of Resident Doctors with the President Medical Trip, I, I don't think uh, it, it's complimentary at all. It has no bearing on his medical uh, trip to the United Kingdom, you know, in line, I'm, I'm sure, with the medical advice that, okay, at X time, come back for medical examination to see how you have uh, uh, improved all your condition after the last time you visited there. So anybody trying to uh, mix both together, I don't think that person is being fair enough to Mr. President. But because don't you first really and think foremost, that naturally Mr. President, the human president like any other Nigerian. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kujime, don't you really think that naturally the president should be undergoing his routine checkups here in Nigeria if the healthcare institutes the, uh, in the healthcare system in Nigeria is actually adequate. Well, the truth of the matter is that our healthcare system, you know, like federal system of government, has about three tiers. We have the primary healthcare, which is the PACs, and they are supposed to be they are run under the local government administration according to the constitution. Then we have the general hospitals, which are under the purview of the state's, you know, uh, government. And we have the tertiary, that's the university hospitals, which are within the purview of the federal government. So if Mr. if we feel that Mr. President should uh, have done his medical uh, examination here, uh, well, I think we are right in that aspect. Uh, as citizens, we must uh, continuously uh, upon the need for our elected or appointed public office holders to ensure that uh, whatever they are benefiting must also be what the ordinary citizens should benefit. But looking at the health situation in this case, you and I wouldn't know. Maybe those facilities or maybe the doctors that Mr. President needs to see are saying, look, we can only attend to you appropriately, you know, right in our own facility. Any other uh, venue, because you all know that uh, the atmosphere the conditions under which a patient is attended to by the medical team also goes a long way, you know, in accelerating the healing process or, you know, accelerating the uh, the medication uh, process. So yes, we can say, oh, Mr. President should have uh, uh, should have had this medical examination in Nigeria. But the, the question we should ask: Do we know the conditions under which he has gone there? Don't forget. This is a medical uh, history that has not been domiciled there even in the past. And I'm sure when he was not uh, Mr. President, I'm sure he wasn't the one that made uh, our uh, medical institutions to become uh, mere consulting clinics, like a former 
head of state rightly. Oh, I, I know, get all that you're saying. I, I get all that you're saying, Mr. Ikujimi, but you're talking about the president's uh, medical history and all of that. Well, I might not be a medical doctor, but I'm sure that um, if there is a medical history, competent doctors can actually stop from where another, you know, uh, start from where another stops. In your opinion, are you saying that um, maybe the average Nigerian uh, medical doctor is not capable enough, you know, to handle such illnesses or such uh, situations, medical situations that may be going on with the president? Well, you have just said it. You know, uh, medical practice is not something you wake up in a day and you become an expert in. It takes years of training, years of uh, experience on the job. And you and I know very for, uh, for, for free that a lot of the aspects of medicine, it is not every aspect of medicine that we have uh, uh, Nigerian experts in. And even if you look, look at the, uh, the environment, you know, to exercise that skill, we lack the basic facilities that is needed. And uh, if, for example, the persons who are supposed to assess the medical condition of Mr. President are outside the country, I see nothing wrong because this is about this is about human life. Because you and I know that life has no duplicate and there's no uh, substitute for life. So if the medical right. history of the of Mr. President warrants him seeing his doctors, and don't forget, the medical condition is about the mindset. All right, the thank you, Mr. Mr. The, Mr. Of the patient goes a long way in in, in that the, All right. the, the, the the assessment. Okay, yeah. let, let's bring in our other guests into this discussion. You have heard the position of uh, Nelson Ekujimi. I just want uh, to get your reaction, bearing in mind that Nigeria loses over 576 billion naira yearly to medical tourism. How would you rate our medical institutions in Nigeria? Uh, well, thank you very much. Before I go into that, I would like to tell Nigerians that uh, we have to be honest with ourselves, and then we have to be honest with the leadership of this country. It will come on national TV and begin to pamper this government. It, we are, it's a big undoing to, to Nigerians. Uh, my brother there said we cannot compare, there's no comparison, there's no linkage between Mr. President's trip abroad and what the resident doctors, the strikes, the proposed uh, resident doctors strike. I, I think there's a lot of you know, commonalities between these two. Uh, number one, if our health facility in Nigeria is working well, uh, I don't think Mr. President would want to travel abroad every time since he came on board as president in this country. Let me remind us that in, 20, in 2016, barely a year after he came into power, it was in UK for this medical, you know, you know, you know treatment, uh, for about six days or three. then he came back. Then he went for another 104 days in 2017. And uh, if not because of COVID, I'm sure between 2019 and 2020, maybe he would have gone for another three or four months. But now he has gone, they said two weeks. My own is that I wish him well. He's an old man and he needs good health to perform the function of the president. The office of the president is so tasking. But there's a question you asked my brother there, and I was marveled with his response. And uh, for me, PMB knew his state of health before he became the president of Nigeria. And it should have, that should have given him an opportunity to improve our health care system in Nigeria. That is what a leader, that is what he sought will do. We have seen private individuals, because their child suffer from sickle cell, they establish a foundation. We have seen men and women in this country, because their child or their member of their family or their, their personality they experience something untoward in their health system, they create a, created an NGO to help the people. What, what is wrong with our president? Who knew the status of his health? Even though they were covering it for Nigerians, some of us knew his health status, but they cover it and we should have leveraged on that and develop our healthcare system. If he has done that, the resident doctors will not be embarking on strike. In any case, what the resident doctors are asking for is their right that Mr. President should have done, should have done what, should have, I mean, taken care of. Now, I wonder why we are going through this route and route and route again. Is it not? It is, is enough of pampering the failure of this government. Mr. President, we know, we thought is an expert in security. 
and we had expected that it would give us A1 in security. You couldn't do that. So I'm not surprised that the, the government of President Muhammadu Bari could not fix health system, our health, 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 health care system. So I'm not surprised. For me, I think Nigeria should try as much as possible, you know, to continuously remind this president that he has a duty, that he has a duty to provide the much needed leadership in this country. Enough of pampering this government. Enough of making them feel they are doing well, whereas they are not doing well. This is not what we need at this time in this country. All right, thank you, Mr. Now, look, at, look at, look at, look at, look at the United Kingdom or Dubai that they travel to. For, for it. When you go there, the people that are doing the job there are Nigerians. All right, uh, we'll come back and talk more on the brain drain, uh, Mr. Fabi. Let me, let me finish, please. Let me finish, please. You gave him enough You time. will come back. Minutes. I'll come back to please. talk to you. Just hang on there. You come and uh, finish your thought. But I just wanted him please, to react him, uh, to some of the things that time. you have said. You will talk. You will talk. I assure you that, Mr. Fa uh, Fabi. Let's get back to Nelson Ekujimi. I just wanted you to react. Uh, uh, Mr. Fabi is saying that uh, this government should not, be should not be continuously pampered. Don't you think it is an affront? Don't you think is it, uh, it is a slight on the part of the government that uh, we have professors in medicine and all of that, yet uh, our average um, hospital uh, in Nigeria at the federal and the state level cannot really meet up to take care of these common diseases and even uh, non-communicable diseases? Yes, I agree absolutely with you that uh, government at various levels have not done enough in you know uplifting the medical institutions we have in the country. But before I go that, please kindly admonish my friend over there that we are not competing to enlight to discuss this issue. It is about expressing your views. I wonder why he's raising his uh, temperature. Uh, he said he has is aware of the president's medical status. Well, I wouldn't know how he became privy to that. But I know if he is privy to that, then I think uh, he has uh, been he has uh, circumvented the law to have been able to assess that because under the law it is only the patient and his medical uh, experts or his medical doctor that should be privy to his uh, no uh, health Mr. status or his uh, no health condition. But let's talk about the issues now. Me. How do we begin to address we, all of these issues? Yes, the way we should begin to address this issue is, support, is for us to raise, you know, these issues to the front burner like we are doing right now. The local governments, the state governments, the federal governments, we need to, in conjunction with the Nigerian Medical Association, we need to reassess our medical situation in this country. The average Nigerian how is able to assess the PACs, the primary health center. How many persons per doc, how many patients but doctor, can we boast of the necessary environment for the doctors to work efficiently? Is it available? What do we? We and I know that you know government has a lot of competing demands. But in the midst of that, just like uh, my brother has said earlier on, even in the era of in the era of education, the, according to UNESCO, Nigeria's uh, countries are supposed to devote 26 percent of their budget to education. But over the years, we have seen the Nigerian government. All right, I think we've lost uh, Mr. Ekujimi uh, there. Let's go back to Mr. Fabi and, and get... We uh... continue to clamor that of our life. That okay. Go... You're still there. Go ahead. So what we are saying is that as Nigerians... We must continuously demand of government that, look, we need to invest more. All right, in your points have been noted, uh, Mr. Nelson Ekudimi. Like, Let us bring in Mr. Oladimeji uh, Fabila. Let's get your uh, final thoughts as we begin to conclude on all of these issues. Find our, our healthcare institution is not where we need it to be. Uh, find uh, red, uh, the National Association of Resident Doctors uh, proceeding uh, on a strike from tomorrow. But just what are the immediate solutions to all of these issues we have plaguing healthcare in Nigeria? Well, it's very simple. It's for the government to respond to the to the to the demands of the health workers. We've been on for in we've been on on this for so many years, and I don't see what is stopping the government. I don't see what is stopping the government from responding to their demands. On so many occasions, governments have agreed. Governments have agreed to attend 
to, to their demands. And on several locations, they have failed. We have to remember that a healthy nation is a wealthy nation. Healthy say is wealth. So if Mr. President, who is leader of this country, feels that our health, you know, our health does not matter, I wonder why he's traveling abroad to go and get medical treatment so that he can be well. So everything still comes back to his table. And I will never join Nigerians that are pampering this government that are making, me, making them feel they are, they are doing well, whereas they are not doing well. So it's for me, because I wonder how many times Mr. President traveled to the UK before he became the president. They should come out and tell us how many times I was looking at Brent Marshall yesterday, listening to him, saying he's a routine medical chief. He has been doing that before. They should give us the record. If you want to come to the water with equity, uh, you must come with finance, convince Nigeria that this is what he has been doing. Bring out the record. Now, let me go back to what my brother said. Very Why quickly, did Mr. President, Just do that when in he was a minute. talking, refused to reveal his life status as somebody who wants to lead Nigeria? He was kept away. And when it will face to do that, it means the message I give to Nigeria is that you have a cockroach in your cupboard. It's a strong belief, a strong belief. And which one Nigeria strongly believe? I don't need to see his medical record before I know that there was something wrong. And at that time, a lot of journalists, a lot of people queried it that why can't he abroad? Everybody will bring the uh, everybody will bring the, any con any contestants for 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 the of the president will bring out their medical report. They will bring out their tax uh, report. Right. They will bring out so many things. Right, did this you, president did do that when he was coming in 2015? These are the questions we should be asking. All right. Well, thank you for your, your time and your thought, and of course, um, all the solutions, too, that you have provided uh, and the need for our doctors and to get back to the hospitals and, and the need also to check all of these issues we have plaguing uh, the healthcare system in Nigeria. Once again, thank you, Mr. Oladimeji Fabi of the People's Democratic Party and, of course, uh, Nelson uh, Ekujumi, who joined us uh, to discuss all of these issues. Now, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take. And now, here's my take. Now, government performance in the health sector has been abysmal. Investment in infrastructure has been poor, and meager remuneration for health workers has created a massive a brain drain to the US, Europe, and of course, even Asia. To achieve success in healthcare in this modern era, a system well grounded in routine surveillance and medical intelligence as the backbone of the health sector is necessary. I believe that Nigeria's policymakers and health professionals, including the Nigerian diaspora, need to come together and create a long term blueprint for the sector. Well, that's close politics. I am Justin Kadonye. We return again tomorrow at 7 p.m. Bye for now.